everybody, my name is Dave Erickson, and about a year ago I wrote a blog post about privacy-first AI and just trying to promote this idea that while we were a year ago really excited about these big third-party cloud service providers providing some really interesting large language models that enabled a lot of really interesting things that kind of started off this wave of investment in AI and vector databases and all these things we're talking about now. A year ago there were still a lot of misconceptions about what private AI meant um, and what was possible to do in more on-prem environment. A lot of people had never used a large language model on-prem, and I wanted to write a blog post to show that anybody can do this, even on the CPU on their laptop. So as part of this, uh, there was a, a diagram, which we can get a lot more clear on now. We've spent a whole year talking about this, and we wanted to do a reprise video. This one's an oldie but a goodie. Even though it's a year old, uh, we think that it's still very, very relevant. So let's get into it. So we have learned, uh, and we had learned by the time we wrote this blog post, uh, and it's just been reinforced since then, that large language models are amazing, but like any new technology, they've got these major limitations. They only know what's in their training data. The training data is usually stuff from the public internet. It's frozen in time. It gets stale really quickly. Getting an LLM to forget something in the training data that we don't like is really difficult. Um, because they're so easy, eager to please and the weights are influenced, it's hard to uninfluence them. Uh, and there really is no sense of role-based access control inside a neural network. It's all an all or nothing proposition. There isn't a portion of the neural network that has one level of access control versus another. It's just one big thing. Uh, at least in the current generation of technology. So this means that we really do need a vector database for this pattern that has emerged and is now kind of a household name in technology at least called retrieval augmented generation. And this is where we're gonna use a vector database to store the knowledge, to be the memory for generative AI and to make that AI better by doing a semantic retrieval on the data based upon the user's question to get all the best context. And with some good prompt engineering, we can get a really good answer out of that. So in that blog post, there was a collab. We're gonna go through it, but first I wanted to uh, you know, sort of talk about how has this changed in the last year? And the answer is it's just gotten easier. While in the blog post I'm running this really tiny model, I think a lot of people now have had the experience of running a pretty capable open source uh, LLM on their laptop, whether they've got a local NVIDIA chip or maybe they've got some Apple Silicon in there. There's a lot of ways to run uh, effectively turning off all your networks and everything's still working. So in the data centers though, we're probably using a technology like local AI or Olama. We're using local video cards like NVIDIA or the ones from Grok, which are really interesting at some of the inference specific tasks. Um, and we're downloading open source models and we're running them and people are having great success. We've had a number of customers that have gone completely into production on the air gap uh, for some pretty capable agentic use cases, much more advanced than we're gonna do in this little demo right here. So when I say air gap, what exactly do I mean? What we mean is that we're running in a computing system that has no network connection outside of a perimeter. And if you've ever been into a data center that's highly secure, sometimes they literally have a piece of yellow tape down on the floor that defines the air gap and says there shall be no wire that crosses this line. And they're very careful about what even what hardware or what networks are allowed to be anywhere near that environment because they really do want it to be 100% private, something that's gonna be very difficult to break into because there just is no network access. Some of the most private and secure, the crown jewel data of energy companies and banks and governments sits inside air gaps and has for decades. And making sure that people in those environments still have the ability to use AI tools is something we've seen a lot of success at at the last year. If you want to learn more about that, come talk to Elastic. So to get into the actual collab here, let's run it and let's see. It actually still works a year later. My Python hasn't broken, which is, you know, um, that doesn't always happen. So this collab that's linked from the blog, um, I've already connected uh, to an instance in Google. I think Google has changed the instance types and how many hours you get of them. It says here, I'm gonna run out of free credits on collab in about three more hours, so that's plenty. And I've got a T4 here, so I've got a little bit of GPU power uh, to power some of these, uh, some of these uh, large language models. But I don't actually need them. In this collab, I believe we're actually running it um, on, on GPU, but we'll, on CPU, but we'll look. So the first step, I'm gonna go and install some dependencies. You'll notice that not a lot of these are pinned except for maybe the Langchain one because Langchain has changed since. Langchain was very, very early when we wrote this blog post. Uh, it was very nice of Harrison to, to retweet the blog post as well, the, the founder of Langchain. 
All right, so we're gonna go enter in my URL for my Elasticsearch, my username, and let's go grab my password. And so uh, this blog post, what it's doing is it's going and looking at three wiki pages from the fandom websites like Wikipedia. And we're gonna grab a spaceship, we're gonna grab uh, two main characters from Star Wars TV shows uh, from 2023, just to, to put this blog post in perspective. Uh, so ah Ahsoka and uh, the Mandalorian. So I'm gonna run this and it's gonna reach out with beautiful soup. It's gonna go grab it, it's gonna process it. It's gonna go extract the text from those websites and turn it into a JSON file for me. The JSON file looks like this. The URL of the web page, the title of the web page, a true false, is this a character, all the information from the sidebar, and when it says paragraph, that should be the, the chunk of actual text from the Wikipedia page talking all about this character from the Star Wars universe. And then when I'm done, just so I never have to run this again, uh, if I run it locally, uh, I'm gonna put it in a pickle file. That's like just a compressed Python object. And now running that, uh, I'm gonna go and just do a test output here. I'm opening up the pickle file and I'm printing out just the titles of the documents that are in there. I've got three documents. All right, so now I'm gonna use Langchain to generate the vectors uh, and store this in Elasticsearch. There are many more ways to generate vectors now. You can host these models in Elasticsearch. You could a year ago as well. Um, but maybe someday we'll do an updated video on this with Olama or with local AI, and we'll show, you know, can I get better results out of the newer models like E5 and Elser that are in Elasticsearch? Probably, but let's keep it simple for here. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to connect to Hugging Face, and I'm going to go get uh, this uh, all MPNet base V2, which was a small vector model that existed at the time. There's nicer ones now, but this one's still pretty useful. And uh, I did an unauthenticated login to Hugging Face here, so it gave me a little warning, but who cares? Uh, and then what I can do is I can establish a Langchain Elastic Vector Search connection. So it's basically creating a client uh, to Elasticsearch, um, and it's going to this DB object is going to be useful for some uh, creating, uh, uh, inserting and retrieving Langchain organized documents. So you can get Langchain to respect your data model if you needed to. Uh, and from here, uh, I'm going to go do the inserts. I think there's only three documents to insert here, so this should go pretty quick. I'm just going to insert this, run it. It's um, there's 664 chunks in those three documents, so not too much. Um, so that's done. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go get the LLM. In this case, I'm using an LLM called Google T5 Flan. It's old, right? But it's gonna be able to run just fine uh, on this. Uh, I think it's actually going to use the GPU here, but if I wanted to run in CPU only mode, I would be able to do that by just adding some extra things and saying, you know, please run on the CPU. In which case it would need a good amount of RAM and it wouldn't be as fast, but because we've got the, TP, uh, the TPU here from Google, uh, we'll have no trouble running this. So we're going to run this. We see it's downloading it. It's got a couple gigs of information. Three gigs, not too bad. Uh, because I'm running Google Colab, downloading from Hugging Face goes real quick. So we'll just let this finish. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a Star Wars trivia chatbot. So when I ask a question in a loop, it's going to go and use this Langchain similarity search to get the best chunks uh, out of that database. Uh, that might have the answer to the question. I'm going to test print the most relevant passage, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, ask the LLM, hey, what's the answer to that, using a little bit of prompt engineering. My prompt engineering is something like, I'm a helpful AI that answers questions. When I don't answer, don't know the answer, I say I don't know, so I don't hallucinate. Uh, and here's context question. If I were to write this in an agentic framework right now, that prompt wouldn't be very much different. All right, so that's finished. So let's run it. Let's run it in a loop. Uh, I wrote this blog post around May the 4th. It only published in June because that's how long it took to get through our blog posting process a year ago. We go a little bit quicker now. So I am a trivia chatbot. Ask me any question about Star Wars. So if I ask, who is the Mandalorian? Run that, see what it gets back. It says, the most relevant passage is Din Djarin is the protagonist of the Star Wars television show, The Mandalorian. So the vector database did its job. Now the question is, can it take this passage and with the prompt engineering figure it out and got the answer. The answer is Din Djarin. It's really simple Q&A 
uh, doing the retrieval augmented generation just locally on a machine at a scale that can run on a, on a uh, you know, uh, can just run on a laptop that has no network card and no GPU uh, necessary for this. As you can see, I used a tiny bit of GPU power here on the, T on the T4, but this model does indeed run even without a GPU. Now, since then, of course, we've got Llama 3, we got Mistral, we got Mixtral, we got all these fun things that we can do uh, on like, uh, you know, a, a local uh, NVIDIA chip or a local Apple Silicon chip. Uh, lots of things are possible, but maybe that's a video for another day. All right, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, it might be fun to run this one at a bigger scale. Maybe we get all of Wikipedia, but the code for that is on the blog post. Thanks, everybody.